Hi future scientists, I am Atom. Join me to learn about the fascinating life and groundbreaking contributions of Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr, a Danish physicist, significantly advanced our understanding of atomic structure and quantum theory. Early life and education. Born on October 7, 1885 in Copenhagen, Denmark, Bohr grew up in an intellectually stimulating environment. His father, Christian Bohr, was a professor of physiology, and his mother, Ellen Adler Bohr, came from a prominent Jewish banking family. This rich academic and cultural background profoundly influenced Bohr's scientific journey. Bohr's older sister, Jenny Bohr, pursued a career in education. His brother, Harold Bohr, was a notable mathematician and an accomplished soccer player, even representing Denmark in the 1908 Olympics. Denmark won the silver medal in men's soccer at the 1908 Summer Olympics. Niels Bohr himself was an avid soccer player during his youth, playing as a goalkeeper for a Copenhagen-based club. Bohr attended Gamelholm Latin School. Later, he enrolled at the University of Copenhagen in 1903 and graduated with a master's degree in physics in 1909. Bohr received his doctorate in 1911 for his research on the electron theory of metals. Personal life. In 1912, Bohr married Margrit Norlund and their partnership was both personal and professional. They had six children together. Christian, Harold, Owe, Eric, Hans, and Ernest. Tragically, Christian and Harold died young, which deeply affected the family. Owe Bohr followed in his father's footsteps, becoming a distinguished physicist and winning the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1975. Early career and research. After earning his PhD in 1911, Bohr moved to Cambridge University's Cavendish Laboratory in England to work with Sir J.J. Thomson. Thomson had conducted the cathode ray tube experiment for the discovery of the electron in 1897. He received the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1906. However, the collaboration between Bohr and Thomson was not fruitful. So Bohr transferred to University of Manchester in 1912 to work with Ernest Rutherford. Rutherford conducted his gold foil experiment and had recently proposed a model of the atom with a dense nucleus surrounded by electrons. Bohr was intrigued by Rutherford's model but recognized its limitations. Bohr model of the atom. Bohr's major contribution came in 1913 when he introduced his model of atomic structure. He proposed that electrons orbit the nucleus in specific quantized orbits. An electron close to the nucleus has low energy and an electron further away from the nucleus has high energy. When electrons gain energy, they jump from low to high energy level. When electrons lose energy, they move from high to low energy level. Thus, electrons jump between the orbits by emitting or absorbing energy in the form of photons. This model explained the spectral lines of hydrogen and laid the groundwork for quantum theory. Bohr founded the Institute of Theoretical Physics in Copenhagen in 1921 which became a center for theoretical physics research and attracted numerous prominent scientists. Bohr received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1922 for his work on the structure of the atoms and the radiation emitted from them. Second World War In March 1940, Bohr auctioned his Nobel Prize medal to benefit the Finnish Relief Fund following the Soviet invasion of Finland in 1939. The person who bought the medal donated it later to the Danish Historical Museum of Fredericksburg.
Boer being of partial Jewish descent was in great danger after the Nazis occupied Denmark in April 1940. Werner Heisenberg, a German physicist and one of Bohr's former students, visited him in Copenhagen in 1941. Heisenberg is famous for the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which states that it is impossible to precisely measure both the position and the momentum of a tiny particle at the same time. The more accurately you know one of these properties, the less accurately you can know the other. The details of the conversation between Bohr and Heisenberg remain a topic of historical debate, particularly regarding Heisenberg's involvement in Germany's nuclear weapons project. Bohr and Heisenberg's discussion lightly revolved around the moral and scientific responsibilities of physicists during wartime. The Nazis had made it illegal for anyone to take gold out of Germany and wanted to use the gold for war purposes. Before the Nazis occupied Denmark, two German scientists, Max von Lau, 1914 Nobel Prize in Physics winner, and James Frank, 1925 Nobel Prize in Physics winner, sent their gold Nobel medals to the Niels Bohr Institute for safekeeping. When Germans occupied Denmark, Bohr and a Hungarian scientist, George von Hevesy, who is one of the discoverers of the element hafnium, which is named after the Latin word for Copenhagen, hafnia. They hit the German physicist Nobel Prize medals by dissolving them in aqua regia, or royal water, which is a mixture of three parts hydrochloric acid and one part nitric acid to prevent confiscation by the Nazis. In 1945, the gold was recovered from the solution and sent to the Nobel Committee to be recast and given back to the two physicists. In September 1943, the situation in Denmark became increasingly dire for the Danish Jews. Bohr, who was both a prominent figure in the scientific community and of Jewish heritage, was a high-profile target. On the night of September 29, 1943, Bohr and his family were helped by the Danish resistance, who arranged for them to be transported to Sweden by fishing boat. The crossing of the Orison Strait was treacherous, but they managed to reach the Swedish coast safely. Bohr's dramatic and perilous escape to Sweden highlights the risks faced by those fleeing Nazi persecution. Unfortunately, Bohr's maternal aunt, Hannah Adler, who was 84 years old at the time, could not leave Denmark. Hannah Adler was a remarkable woman. Being one of the first women to graduate from the University of Copenhagen in 1892, she was a headmistress of the progressive Hannah Adler's co-educational school in Copenhagen, which was inspired by the American model and provided an environment where boys and girls participated equally in all activities. Arrested by the Nazis because of her Jewish heritage, Hannah Adler was eventually released after 400 of her former students successfully petitioned for her freedom. She died in freedom in 1947 in Copenhagen. Arrival in Sweden and continued efforts. Upon arrival in Sweden, Bohr immediately appealed to the Swedish government and King Gustav of Sweden to provide help to rescue Danish Jews. The Swedish-American actress Greta Garbo requested King Gustav to meet Bohr and offer him his assistance. All these efforts combined with those of the Danish resistance and Danish citizens contributed to the rescue of over 7,000 Danish Jews who were ferried to safety in Sweden. Bohr's journey to the UK and the United States. Bohr left Sweden for the UK in a British Mosquito combat aircraft, but the flight helmet with headphones was too small for him 
causing him to miss the instructions to wear the oxygen mask, and so he passed out. The pilot had to drop to a lower altitude to revive Bohr and safely complete the journey. Bohr traveled to the United States in 1943. In the U.S., he joined the Manhattan Project with code name Nicholas Baker, contributing to the development of atomic weapons. Despite his involvement in the project, Bohr remained a staunch advocate for the peaceful use of nuclear energy and international cooperation. Post-war contributions. After the war, Bohr returned to Denmark and continued to promote peaceful uses of atomic energy. He also used his influence to assist other scientists who had been persecuted or displaced by the war. Bohr's home in Copenhagen was a meeting place for scientists from around the globe who collaborated and discussed ideas with Bohr. These interactions enriched the scientific community and facilitated the exchange of ideas across cultures. Personal Interests and Traits Bohr was known for his humble and gentle nature. In addition to soccer, Bohr also loved skiing and sailing. He often spent time with his family in their summer house near the sea. Support from the Carlsberg Foundation The Carlsberg Foundation, established by J.C. Jacobson in 1876, played a vital role in supporting Bohr's scientific endeavors. The Foundation provided funding for the Institute of Theoretical Physics, founded by Bohr, which became a leading center for research in quantum mechanics and theoretical physics. Bohr lived in the Carlsberg residence for 30 years, from 1932 to 1962. The support from the Carlsberg Foundation enabled Bohr to continue his research and foster collaborations with scientists worldwide. Bohr's Legacy CERN, located in Geneva, Switzerland, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, was founded in 1954 after Bohr's extensive advocacy for international scientific collaboration. Bohr was named an honorary citizen of Copenhagen and received the Order of the Elephant, Denmark's highest civilian honor. Niels Bohr passed away on November 18, 1962 in Copenhagen. Niels Bohr's contributions to quantum mechanics are foundational. His humanitarian efforts during World War II, advocacy for peaceful nuclear energy, and promotion of international scientific collaboration. All these left a lasting legacy. His life and work continue to inspire, underscoring the importance of scientific inquiry, cooperation, and ethical leadership. The Bohr family's story of escape and resilience during one of history's darkest periods remains a powerful testament to courage and the enduring human spirit. There you have it, the work and life of Niels Bohr. Happy learning. Thank you.